with St. Francis head men's basketball coach Rob Krimmel. Uh, coach Krimmel's team is in action this weekend. Hit the road uh, for a couple more in NEC play. They are at Merrimack to take on the Warriors at 3 p.m. and then at, at Bryant fans on Martin Luther King Day. That's January 17th. That's a 7 p.m. tip from Smithfield, Rhode Island. Both of those games can be seen on Northeast Conference front row. The Flash were on the road last week. Rob's team lost 75 to 70 in overtime at LIU in a really thrilling game from Brooklyn. Uh, some key contributions uh, up and down the lineup. Ramir Dixon caught over 21 points, five boards, five assists, continues to just fill the stat sheet up. Max Land, who's also going to be on the show, had a career high 20 points. Marlon Hargis had 10. It was a good effort, and you were a little shorthanded uh, for various reasons. Uh, it was, uh, I, in my judgment, a really good effort. Your thoughts on the intensity your team brought to that game? I thought they showed a lot of character, and especially after the way that we played on Thursday. Um, played well in the first half. And as we continue to talk about the consistency we're looking for, um, I thought that the, the 40 minutes that we played at LIU were the best 40 minutes we played in a long time. And, again, you mentioned missing a few pieces. And that consistency that, that we searched for, um, you know, the, the effort was there. The guys are the guys are giving it their all, and I mentioned something after the game about you know, if it was just showing up in ninety four by fifty. We have to remember that these kids are you know eighteen to twenty two year old kids that are going through a lot of you know a lot of things for the first time, and you know for them to respond the way they did, I was proud of their effort, and it, and it speaks to you know, people like Ramir and and uh, you know the, the leadership that we have with Miles and. and Luke and the ability to keep these guys locked in because you do have to have a short-term memory in basketball. You play Thursday, you got to flip it around and play Saturday. And we've had a little bit of a break here uh, as we prepare for our upcoming opponents and a chance to you know, get back and, and uh, you know, work on a few things in preparation for this weekend. The 70, Rob, it was the first time we hit 70 since we put up 81 uh, in the win at Hartford on December 14th. So that's promising. You had balance. Yes. Again, you were down. You were down some guys that put numbers in the scoring column and to get some contribution uh, from some other guys. Uh, Max and double figures, as I mentioned, with the career high. Marlon with 10. Ramir with 21. If you can get three or four guys at around that number, you have a good chance to win. And, that, and that's a great point. You know, up until really pre-Christmas, we had, had done a pretty good job offensively. We, we, we were executing at a high level, and uh, you know a lot of that had to do with some of the continuity in the lineup and having guys playing with each other in, in combinations and rotations. And we've had a little bit of a bump in the road here. And uh, I think every college basketball team at some point will, will go through it. The good thing for us is we have a lot of basketball ahead of us and get some guys back, get some guys healthy, uh, you know, continue to build on some different combinations as we work towards being at our best in February and March. And uh, it's, it's been difficult, obviously, the last couple of, of, of games offensively, but hopefully those pains will, will yield some results in the long run as guys learn to play with each other and we get contributions from different people. It's a good test. The words are 4-0. Tied for first with Wagner in the conference. Now, they've won three fans. They won one by forfeit. They're 8-8 eight and eight overall. And this was interesting. Uh, and I don't know if I've ever seen this. Uh, a league foe uh, played three of the same schools out of conference. They played Hartford. Uh, they played Lehigh. And they played Virginia Tech. They're good. They don't turn the ball over. They're plus five in the turnover margin. We don't either. We're at plus two. Although we did LIU, we had a few more than we typically have. Uh, uh, but uh, their junior, uh, Jordan Miner, he's very good. He will be a good test for our post players on Saturday. And, and certainly the way that they, they play, Joe's done a great job with his crew and uh, no different this year. You know what you're going to get when you go up there and, and they're going to take care of the basketball. Slow and they're going to slow it down and every possession matters. So not only are they really good at taking care of the ball, they're good at turning people over. And and, and that combination of, of – you know, valuing the basketball and getting a shot every time. But when you have talented players, that helps. And then when you can turn people over at the level they turn people over, it allows them to get downhill. So it'll be a good test for our guys. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're playing well right now. And obviously being at home, it'll be a good test. And we know what we need to do going into that game. Now it's just a matter of going out and executing and uh, you'll play in hard for 40 minutes.
And you get Peter Kiss, who leads the league on Monday night, uh, 20 and a half a game <laughs> at, on a Martin Luther King Day. Let's talk about our guys. Ramirez second in the league in assists, fans at 3.93. He's second in steals, better than two a game. And he's second in assist to turnover ratio. I mentioned we're at plus two. His decision making has really helped us in that area. He has some young guys, still young guys. Zari's young. He's a sophomore. Rennell uh, is still a young player. Max, who started last year, but he's still a sophomore. Uh, Ramir is, is doing some good things that I have no doubt are going to translate into wins. And that, that steadying factor right now, not, and, and you can see it in the stats, but in the locker room. You know, he's, he's been, been very engaged. We challenge these guys. It's easy to identify a problem, right, Pat? We, we talked about this. Oh, the, you're not doing this, or you're not doing that, or this team's not doing this, or this player's not. Well, what's the solution? And he's been very, and, and a lot of our guys have been, have been very forthcoming with solutions and, and being engaged. And that's been a good example for our younger players. And, and when you talk about going through the rigors of an entire season, they've yet to do that. Last year, I think we played three non-conference games, maybe, yeah. or four, you know, whatever the numbers were. You know, then be able to bounce back and play a full league schedule with, with the way we're playing it on that Thursday, Saturday swing, and now obviously a Saturday, Monday. So his ability to kind of steady the group right now and play with different combinations has been a big reason why you look at, you know, the St. Francis, New York game, we were up at half. And you know, the FDU game, you know, we got off to a slow start, but, you know, got us – you know, got a close there and kind of the same thing with Wagner. And, and then obviously the LIU game, it's it's a few possessions here and there. And he's doing everything he can, both offensively and defensively, to give us a chance. And uh, it comes down to one or two possessions and, and, and you look at the flow of the game and trying to eliminate those turnovers that you mentioned and, and, and trying to make sure that we you know do our part to put our players in a position defensively to, to help take them out of what they do really, really well. And he's been a big part of that, you know, being able to talk on the court, being able to connect in the locker room and, He's, uh, you know, as you mentioned, he's, he's a kid that we're going to rely on down the home stretch here. Yeah, and we put so much weight on his shoulders because we want him to handle some. Now, you'll take him off the ball, handling the ball to give him a break. But, you know, the, he's constantly making decisions because you want him in the lane as well, but you also want him to facilitate. And so you're asking a lot of him. And I know he accepts it. He accepts that challenge. And, uh, you know, the the pressure that he puts on himself to, to want to be the best is, um, you know, pales in comparison to what we can do as coaches, right? He wants, he wants to do it. That's a really good one. <laughs> he wants to, he wants to go out there and perform. And there are times where I have to explain to him, I've got to take that out of the game. All right. We, you've got to come out of the game at this point. You've got to catch your breath because you're playing so hard on both ends. And, um, you know, it's when you have a player like that, that can do multiple things for you and his versatility, it, again, it makes, my job easier, especially when you have you know some different pieces coming in and out of the lineup. Mm -hmm. That one steadying force and uh, that factor that, in the long run, will uh, it will pay dividends for us. And I want to mention Max, who uh, one of his backcourt partners. He scored in double figures in four of the last five games. He had 20 uh, against LA. You had. Uh, uh, some really good looks and, and halfway home. Some of those shots were uh, halfway home, but he's, he's starting to play really well. And his perimeter game is really important in order for us to get where we want to go. Absolutely. And it's good to see him being aggressive. You know, sometimes as a, you know, when you rely on someone to score, maybe shoot the ball for you, there can be some hesitancy when you miss that first shot or that miss that second shot or it goes in and out. But the last couple of games, he's been able to put together um, – some performances that, you know, maybe he misses his first shot or two, but he continues to work. And then not only work offensively, but work defensively. And, you know, a couple areas of his game that he's gotten a lot better, aside from him being more aggressive, is, you know, taking care of the basketball. He gives us that other ball handler out there that can facilitate in half court. And uh, also, if a team tries to press us, you have someone at the back end that can really shoot the basketball and, and, and can attack with some, some athleticism. So his versatility, his aggressiveness, his ability to make plays for others, uh, has been on full display the last couple of games and something we're going to look to down the stretch also. Have you ran out of good movies with all these bus trips? You've been on buses for a long, long time. <laughs> middle, but now it's the middle of January. You and I go way back. And back in the day, you one of my responsibilities, right, was to go get the movies. and you know, <laughs> It might have been VCR tapes, uh, right? I did VCR tapes and we did DVDs, Pat. But these, kid, these, these kiddos are so engaged or engulfed in their own Watch movies. Their own. They have their own movies. They, they, they have... They probably have more uh, movies on their iPads and their computers than Blockbuster did back in the day. So they, uh, you know, they they have plenty of movies to keep themselves entertained. And uh, that, that that day is gone. Yeah, you want to talk about you want to talk about pressure? Though. I'll go back in the day. That's a lot of pressure when you're trying to please not just the, the head coach, the assistant coaches, but then 15 college 
uh, college uh, student athletes, you know, trying to make sure you get something that everybody likes because not everybody likes thrillers or horror movies or We're not on the blockbuster. Or, with yeah, you. right. You know, so that's a you're standing there looking at that. Well, what movie should I get? You know, how do I get? How do I get one that everybody likes? And you know, I'm glad that I don't have to do the, to do that anymore. <laughs> well, you did a good job of that, from what I recall. One less thing to worry about. <laughs> Rob, safe travels. Yeah. Thanks, Great man. talking Appreciate to you as always. Absolutely. Good luck against Merrimack and Bryant. Thanks, Pat. What's better than a McDonald's Big Mac? How about getting one for free? The Red Flash Three Point Madness is back. When St. Francis makes eight three pointers in a home game, Big Macs are buy one, get one free. It's another reason to love Red Flash basketball. The offer is only good the day after the game at participating restaurants. Pat Farbaugh with St. Francis sophomore Max Lamb. Max is from Cincinnati, Ohio. His team is hitting the road for a couple more. They're at Merrimack on Saturday, January 15th. It's a 3 p.m. tip against the Warriors. And then at Bryant for a night game on Martin Luther King Day, January 17th. The team is coming off a 75-70 overtime loss. To LIU, really good game. Uh, Max, uh, I'll get to his numbers in that game in just a second. First off, thanks for making some time to talk yeah, to me. Thanks for having me in. It's yeah. always good to talk with you. So Max uh, had a career high 20 points in the game against LIU. Also had eight rebounds, fans. That was a season high. The 19 points surpassed his previous career high from earlier this year. He did that here at the Stokes Center. Had 19 points against Franciscan. Hit three three-pointers against LIU. We were talking before the cameras went up. We came up on the short end, but that was a really exciting game, uh, looking back at the LIU contest. Yeah, it was. Um, it was real. It was real back and forth the whole game. We just came down the last couple of buckets in overtime, and we unfortunately didn't get the win. A little bit shorthanded. Uh, we were, were not at full strength uh, with the players uh, that we've had. And, you know, we are still hunting that first win. Uh, we are looking uh, for that in the trip. To Merrimack is one of the starters, uh, one of only two players to start every game this year. Max is uh, and team leaders. How do you feel the chemistry is? Because sometimes when you're when you're when you're working hard and trying to put one in the win column, uh, frustrations can rise. Do you feel like the team's uh, is in the right place mentally? Yeah, for sure, definitely mentally. And you know, having all these losses and not being able to get our first conference win has definitely put a chip on our shoulder. So all the guys have kind of pulled towards the middle, and we were all really working for the same thing. So our chemistry has been there over the last couple of weeks trying to get our first conference win. Through 15 games, fan Max is averaging and even 10 points per game, 4.1 rebounds per game, playing 32 minutes a game. So he is on the court uh, most of the time. He scored in double figures in four of our last five games. That shot, it's looking like you're becoming much more confident uh, with it, and uh, you have deep range do you feel the sh your shots where you want it to be right now yeah for sure i think i should be shooting at a, a higher clip more better percentage i guess you could say i'm definitely working towards that but i'm definitely getting the shots that i need to need to get in the game i've been practicing them and i think as i just learn more about the pace of the game and to getting into the flow of our offense with my teammates i'm starting to get those great looks top free throw shooter fans he hasn't gotten there as much as some other guys but the top free throw shooter on the team at 83%. I want to talk a little bit about your background, uh, Max. Uh, you're a finance and economics major here. You were a four-year letter winner and two-year captain at Archbishop Muller, uh, played for uh, the Fighting Crusaders, and you won a lot. <laughs> you played 110 games over the course of your high school career. You won 103 of those. Uh, th that's a remarkable run of success. If you could just comment on uh, what did those teams have that uh, I don't know what the winning percentage is, well into the 90s, but what, what made those teams so successful? Honestly, I think it was, like you talked about the chemistry that this team was building. I, th I think those teams really just had great chemistry. Like no matter what grade I was in, whether it be sophomore, junior, or senior, we had, we had great players and great guys that just really like knew their role to the team and they really bought into it. And um, we had an accumulation of a lot of guys that just bought into their specific role. We never really had egos on those teams. So basically, we just had a lot of, like, brothers looking out for each other and playing well together all the time. And we just had that, that great companionship as a, as a whole program. You've played with some great players. I mean, uh, Deuce McBride, 
uh, who was drafted by Oklahoma City and traded to the Knicks. Uh, he's played in 16 games with the Knicks. He had 39. You, you know, you saw that in the G League on Tuesday night. The talent you played with was remarkable. Yeah, it was. And that's definitely something that led up to where I am today. Like, I wouldn't be the player I am without guys like Deuce or Jackson Hayes and all the other great players that I play with. You know, that analogy that iron kind of sharpens iron. That's where I get, like, all my skill and everything I know about the game, the guys I played with in high school. And you can't set me up for a better transition. You said iron and steel. The Steelers play Kansas City on Sunday night in the playoffs. Uh, the Bengals are in, too, but uh, you're a Steelers fan. You're not a Bengals fan. fan. Tell us why. That comes from my mom's background. You know, my, my grandpa, my late grandpa who passed away, he, he's from Pittsburgh. So I've always had that Pittsburgh connection with my family and football. So I just always been a Steelers fan. Now, the Bengals, though, uh, Sam Hubbard played safety at Muller. Yep. He has seven and a half sacks this year uh, yeah. for the Bengals. So is there any mixed loyalty there? Or is it all Steelers? No, no. Sam Hubbard, he he played basketball in high school at Muller. And um, he's actually... He never played together. No, 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 no. He, he's, he's, he's a little older than yeah. me. He, was on, he played, I think he graduated 2013. And he played on a really good state team that, that won state in football that year. And he's actually cousins with one of my teammates from high school, G. Thompson. He's, he's cousin of one of my old teammates, and that's actually how I met Sam Hubbard. Okay. Yeah, that little connection right there. Yeah, he uh, plays has played well for the Bengals this year. The Bengals are playing well. One other question I wanted to ask you uh, was uh, about being from Cincinnati and about the connection this school has to the former Cincinnati Royals, you know, the Sacramento Kings. It's the same franchise. But that Royals history, did you know uh, – at all about the story of Stokes and Twyman uh, by having grown up in Cincinnati at all? Was that familiar with you at all before you came here? I actually didn't know anything about that story until I got here. But just a little bit about the Cincinnati connection, um, how I kind of found out about stuff. St. Francis is Coach Taylor. Coach Taylor's from Cincinnati. Yeah, went to and Withrow. He went to Withrow actually with one of my aunties. He went to one of my he went to high school with one of my aunties, and they were great friends. So oh, my okay. family always knew about T, and T recruited me in high school. So that's kind of how I got my connection to here, and that's kind of what who who led me here. Now, please tell me you knew about the Big O. Oh yeah, growing up. I definitely knew about the Big O. All right. up. Yeah. He definitely didn't watch him, right? But right. definitely his accolades. Nor did I. Nor did I. Not <laughs> De- that old. Def- <laughs> definitely his seeing his accolades and what he did for the game. I definitely took t- take a note from him. Yeah, you came to a school that has a lot of Cincinnati connections. Of course, Jack Twyman, on an alum up here, uh, played at UC, and uh, you know, obviously became Stokes Guardian, and, and the story is so rich. But uh, it's fun to see that Cincy connection with ET, right. three-time All NEC uh, performer from Withrow, uh, and then you come in here, and, and it just continues that. That story about yeah. the Cincy Loretto connection. Yep. Well, it's been fun to watch you play. You're playing at a high rate right now. The winds are going to come. I'm uh, very confident. Safe travels and good luck against the Warriors on Saturday. Appreciate it.